I'm Doc Aye and I'm my eye dog. Today I'm going to share with you one of the more common referrals I get in the clinic which is headache. Not all headaches are created equal. It's not a simple symptom with just a simple history, that's a simple diagnosis requiring simple treatment. You get headache when you come across headache. But today we are going to focus on one very common type of headache which is migraine. Some of our Pinoy Chamis call it or pronounce it migraine. Migraine. Connecting it to the phrase ang sakit ng utak ko. Oh no. But migraine is not a laughing matter as it cripples to the point of interference with daily activities in quality of life. I am a migraine sufferer myself. I get headaches a week before my menses come or when I sleep with wet hair or when I use the computer in the dark. Ay mo bumangon, sakit ng ulo mo parang binabarena, gusto mo sumuka, ay di ka makakain, ay mo sa maliwanag, ay mo na maingay, hindi ka, ay mo gumalaw. In short, it's a debilitating condition. But in this video, I'm going to share with you some of the things I learned about migraine through the years of my clinic experience and my own personal experience. So whatever you may learn from this video, I hope you use it for your own good. And if it will benefit others, I hope you can share it too. So keep listening everyone! So who gets migraine? Migraine has been known to exist for 5,000 years and some notable people in history who are believed to have a share in migraine pain are the Apostle Paul, US President Thomas Jefferson, author Edgar Allan Poe, the Emperor Julius Caesar, philosopher Sigmund Freud, and the inventor Alexander Graham Bell. I know Alexander. He invented the bell. Oh, no. Not the bell, Dingo. He invented the cracker, Graham Cracker. Migraine has been diagnosed in children as young as 18 months, but some lucky people may experience their first migraine only in their 80th year of life. In the majority, their first migraines most often occur during teenage years. All across ages, however, more women suffer from migraine than men. But what is migraine? The word migraine is French, but derived from the Latin word hemicrania which means pain in half the head, which is a misnomer today because it is only true in 20% of cases. Migraine headache is a disease like high blood or diabetes. It's a total body illness, not just involving the head. It has a lot of aliases and subtypes. Common headache, menstrual headache, menopausal headache, sex headache, classic migraine, facial migraine, silent migraine, or complicated migraine. The pain of migraine are described in many ways. Some dull, some piercing, they are recurrent. The pain can build up over minutes to hours and may last for several days. Contrary to popular belief, migraines are not exclusively one-sided. In fact, 80% of the time, the pain may be concentrated in both areas of the head or felt all over the head or even in the face. They may be associated eye symptoms like glare or silaw, seeing zigzag arcs that flicker, we call them tachopsia, distortion of vision or blurriness, red eyes, dark under eye circles. Other non-visual signs and symptoms may include nausea, vomiting, intolerance to sound, impaired concentration, dizziness, cold palms and feet, weakness, and or irritability among others. So migraines can be complicated to diagnose, but if we zero in on a common migraine, this is what we usually find. Moderate to severe unilateral headache, throbbing quality to the headache, pumipintig, nausea or vomiting, naduduwal or sumusuka, sensitivity to light, may silaw sa ilaw and or sound, aggravation by routine activity. So what causes migraine? The short answer to this is we don't really know the definite cause yet. All we have are triggers for migraine but not the real cause. Out of numerous studies, no single factor can be pointed as the exclusive cause of migraine headaches. For example, stress does not cause headache in anyone. It can trigger them, but it does not cause them. 
Let it be clear that stress is suffered by all human beings, but it cannot turn anyone into a migraine sufferer. There have been theories on migraine being a blood clumping disorder, a blood vessel disorder, a brain disorder, or a neck disorder. A neck disorder? As I read more about it, the words seemed to jump out of the book for me, as I used to be a bad migraine sufferer myself. I have been noticing that a poor posture or prolonged neck bending work over my laptop leads me to feel soreness in my neck and shoulders which later on translates to pain in my head. So, there is such a thing as a migraine pain center. Yes, a migraine pain center is an area somewhere between the head and the neck where the neck nerves meet the brain nerves. The neck is the most complex 15 centimeters of human anatomy. There have been substantial evidence suggesting that dysfunction or irritation in any of the neck structures like the spinal nerves, blood vessels, muscles, discs may be related to the cause of migraine. So when do migraines come on? The short answer to this is any time can be headache time. Many different factors can trigger a migraine attack. Here are some of the more common ones. You may want to listen here because some of these may be true for you. Number one is hormonal shift, as in menses, menopause, or hormonal imbalances. Number two is stress. It can be work-related, in social relationships, or your life struggles. Number three is weather changes. Even in air conditioning, extreme heat or cold, and strong winds may bring about a headache. Number four is diet. It can be use of caffeine, MSG, vetchin, alcohol, smoking, milk and dairy, or even tyramine, which is found in cheeses. Number five is sleep habits. Too much or too little sleep can cause headache. Long naps can cause headache. Number six is light, as in prolonged gadget screen time, or even using the fluorescent lighting, or bright sunlight can trigger a migraine attack. Some uncommon ones may be worth mentioning, like strong fragrance or odor, a tight cup, a tight face shield or goggles, wrong postures in a bent neck or a hunchback, travel as in a long car ride, or sexual activity. There may be other triggers, but take note that the very first three we listed here like weather or hormonal shift cannot be avoided. They are out of our hands to control. However, if we look at the last three in our list of triggers, the way we eat, sleep, and work are within our ability to modify. The key is self-observation. We must be on the lookout for possible triggers that bring about our own personal migraine attacks. The more factors we are able to identify, the greater the possibility of elimination of that trigger and the earlier we are able to put a lid on it. That brings us to our final section which is, how do we manage migraines? Migraine for most people is a lifelong disorder, but the good news is, migraine can usually be well managed. It is best to learn from yourself, your doctor, and other migraine sufferers to avoid the things that can trigger your pain. So self-observation, awareness, and education will go a long way in keeping the attacks at bay. So, in general, there are two ways to approach the management of migraines. First is prevention, which is tantamount to lifestyle changes and avoidance of trigger. And second is alleviation of the pain which includes home remedies and medical prescriptions. First arm prevention. Number one, dietary management. This includes regulation of eating schedules. It is best to eat and drink something warm for breakfast like ginger tea with honey. In general, it should include lots of herbs and vegetables and fruits and avoid processed foods that are loaded with neurotoxins. More on this in my next video which discusses more about food triggers in detail. Number two is sleep management. Regular quality sleep is helpful for migraine sufferers. Try to sleep and wake at the same time of the day every day. Adults need about seven hours of rest to recharge. In the afternoon, a 15 minute power nap will do wonders for your head. Meanwhile, if done in excess, like a 100 minute nap, this may be counterproductive and give you a throbbing headache when you wake up. Third one, stress management. Online work headache may come on triggered by stress, but there is an unsuspecting accomplice that may well be the main culprit, fluorescent light. Fluorescent light flickers so fast that it's not detectable by the human eye. One way to avoid this covert trigger is to wear tinted or polarized glasses. 
Headache patients should try to minimize as many sources of stress as possible. Seek to come to terms with any areas of conflict in your personal life, your work, relational life, or spiritual life. It may be harder during these rough times when many have lost jobs, homes, or even loved ones, but it will surprise you how some people are handling stress better than others. As it said, life is 20% what happens to you and 80% how you react to it. Laugh at yourself. A jovial and sunny disposition is a powerful ally in bringing about the bodily chemical reactions that tone down your pain. This fourth one is very much related to the third, improve general health and wellness. This includes practice breathing exercises and physical activity for at least 30 minutes, three times a week. You may cut down on alcohol and smoking and change your diet and activity to reach your ideal weight. Organize and balance your life. This includes regularity in sleep, eating, praying, reading, time for relaxation, pampering and all sorts of daily activities. Then again, the converse applies. All play and having no purpose in life leads to feelings of frustration, regret, and loneliness. Did you know that research has shown that religious commitment is associated with a healthier lifestyle and a healthier body? Studies have shown that people who do not attend church are four times more likely to commit suicide than people who do. Science has proven that social support religious commitment, prayer, and relationship with God are beneficial to mental health. People who pray report positive emotions of peace, assurance, joy, hope. Spiritual well-being is powerfully interconnected to one's physical well-being. Prayer does wonders for an ailing body. Time and again, many have proven that the Lord's power and mercy are beyond comprehension. Now we go to the final arm which is pain alleviation. Number one, home remedies. These are easy to carry out and may include simple techniques like muscle stretching exercises, especially in the neck area. Massage, hot packs, or even a cold shower may do wonders. These maneuvers all help with the inflammation and relieving the spasm or tightness, especially in the neck. Ginger or turmeric tea with a little honey inhibits inflammation and aids in smoother blood flow. Patients have reported that regular consumption of ginger and ginger teas eventually yield to lesser migraine attacks. Other herbal remedies include feverfew, black currant seed oil, or evening primrose oil. You may also apply and massage ointments to the scalp. Helpful ones include those containing peppermint oil, menthol, eucalyptus, and ethanol. Next, rehabilitation therapy. Acupuncture, acupressure, traction techniques, ultrasound, and other physical therapy may also be beneficial especially in people with nerve root irritations, muscle spasms, and tightness and other neck or spine conditions. The last one is use of medications. It has been shown that quick intervention with analgesic medicines improves your chances for relief like a leak in a dam. Each second you delay treatment is a second closer to the point of no return from your headache pain. Once the migraine gets worse, it becomes too late for the medicine to work. Popping a pill early enough increases your chances of aborting the attack altogether. So, it is prudent to have your analgesic meds with you wherever you go. All meds should be crushed and taken with a warm sweetened beverage like turmeric tea with honey for faster absorption and relief. Your anti-migraine armory may include aspirin, paracetamol, ibuprofen, mephonamic acid. Some vitamins like B-complex, vitamin C, and E may be combined with analgesics for better and faster pain relief. However, in the long run, drugs that do work may lose their effectiveness after two or three months. Eventually, discontinuance of frequent intake of pain relievers is our primary long-term target. These goals when achieved may maximize the effects of preventative measures that we have mentioned. So thank you for listening everyone. Hope you learned something.